Hello, my name is Matana Vital, Senior Solution Engineer in Cheminario. Today I'm going to review the Cheminario K2 PowerShell module. The K2 PowerShell module features the K2 RESTful API functionality as PowerShell commandlets and gives a system administrator a user-friendly CLI interface to manage the Cheminario K2 all flash array in Windows environments and tools that leverage PowerShell, such as VMware's PowerCLI. Installing the module can be done by running an MSI installer or using PowerShell Gallery. To install the module using PowerShell Gallery, make sure you are running the latest version of the PowerShell GET module and issue the following command. Once installed and configured, we can start working with the module right away. We can explore the module by showing some various examples. Get all fiber channel ports connected to the K2 array. Get events of disconnected paths by filtering the name parameter using regular expressions. Creating a volume group with five volumes in a single line. Creating a host group with three Linux hosts which compose together a cluster. Mapping the volumes to the host group. So as we've seen, getting information from the K2 is pretty easy. And so is creating or updating objects in the K2. When removing existing objects from the K2, a user confirmation is required unless the force flag was specified. A major advantage of working with the K2 PowerShell module is the ability to use the PowerShell infrastructure for complicated tasks. For example, we can write and run a script that uses VMware's PowerCLI to get data from vSphere and use it in the K2 or vice versa. In our vSphere environment, we have a cluster that was connected to a new K2 array. To map volumes to the vSphere cluster, we have to create the host objects in the K2 with their appropriate WWPNs. The following script can do just that very quickly. First, we set some variables of our environment. Next, we connect to the vCenter and store the list of ESX hosts in the cluster. At the next step, we check for an existing host group in the K2, and in case it is missing, we create a new one. In the main part of the script, we loop through the cluster's hosts. At first, we create the host in the K2 with its proper name. Then, we fetch the host's WWPNs, and for each WWPN, we format it in a K2 accepted format. At the last step, we assign the WWPNs to the K2 host object. Another cool example is to get all RDM volumes in the vSphere environment, look them up in all K2 systems, and add a meaningful description to the volumes in the K2. Our lab in Kemenario has multiple K2 systems, so RDM volumes are distributed across different K2 arrays. We'll search for RDM volumes in all the relevant K2 arrays. Using PowerCLI commandlets, we get all RDM volumes in the cluster, look for them in all the K2 systems, and once found, we add a description with the VM name and the hard disk number. Having the description populated for RDM volumes assists with mapping the environment and prevents human errors. To summarize, managing the K2 all flash array using the K2 PowerShell module can assist in automating tasks and easily solve more complicated operations. Thanks for watching.